Happy Sunday, everyone. Thank you all for coming. Uh, so we'll talk about engineering intuitive experiences. Uh, my name is Teresa Novotna. I'm an interaction designer at Red Hat, working on the management portfolio on satellite insights and cloud forms. Uh, I've been with Red Hat for, it's going to be a year. Nice. And I'm Colleen Hart, and I'm an interaction designer with Red Hat as well. Uh, working on OpenShift, and it will be about three years. I'm out of the Boston office. And I'm based here in Brno. Um, UFC team has about 100 people in entire Red Hat, and we cover, we make our products more user-friendly, and we keep the user experience consistent across the products. Uh, so what we will cover today, uh, we'll talk about empathy and how it is a first step in user-centered design. We'll talk about some failed designs and how not to do it, but we'll provide you with five tools how you can make your products more user-friendly. I have a question. How many designers do we have in the room? How many engineers? Okay, good to know. Well, uh, we'll start. All right, so empathy is seeing through the lens of others. And as we saw, there's a number of engineers in the room. So thinking about um, empathy and being empathetic with you all as we're designers, we think about, from a business sense, why empathy is important. Because, of course, the customer is central in this idea. And from a presentation standpoint, it's important to know your audience. So we have to be empathetic and understand where you're coming from. And from a design standpoint, it's very central to understanding your users and what they're looking for, first and foremost. So we asked a number of our colleagues, other Red Hatters who are engineers, developers, uh, to fill out empathy maps. And these are just a subset of some of them. So we asked another, a number of them to fill out uh, an empathy map, which basically asks what they're seeing, what they're saying, what they're doing, hearing, thinking, feeling. So let's take a look. They s were seeing, these are real quotes, we didn't, <laughs> didn't make these up, messy desks, alternative technologies, uh, bugs and broken code sometimes. They're saying we need compatibility, this migration might be a headache, uh, nobody understands. They're hearing, I don't get it, maybe from us, <laughs> they're, they're hearing we need to meet the deadline. Um, different groups advocating for different tools, of course. And they're thinking or feeling, bugs are annoying, we change process too much, and people, maybe sometimes deadlines and broken code are painful. So this is kind of an idea to help us empathize where engineers are coming from and get us kind of in the right frame of mind to present. So we try to empathize with you, the engineers, because empathy is the first step in the user-centered design. Uh, UX design is the act of planning, evaluating, and evaluating systems to maximize good user interaction. Uh, but rather than jumping into the solution, it's important to understand our users' needs, goals, validate the in uh, assumptions, but also ask for the right feedback. Um, you can see how the designer attempted this journey to be, but what the user experience actually was. Um, even in our designer job, we design things, but if we don't test it on actual users, um, we don't necessarily get it right. So we need to validate assumptions. Um, wonder how hard it was to get some money from this ATM. In this case, I think I would rather take the stairs. Safety first. <laughs> um, if I'm charging my mouse, how am I going to be charging it at the same time and using it? Very helpful. Uh, these are a few pictures from uh, Boston where you can see that it's really easy to figure out when I should park. Uh, or also how to get to specific locations. So if you solve the wrong problem, it doesn't matter how well you solve it. Um, and we want to solve the right problems and validate our assumptions. 
Um, has, any, has anyone here participated in a usability test? Nice. So you have gotten to the feedback loop. So we show uh, user experience at the center of this diagram kind of as a, a balancing act. So balancing business goals, of course, maybe from a PM level, trying to figure out what we're, what we're solving. But there's going to be technical constraints involved. And we're focused on the user needs. So balancing these three components is hopefully going to lead to a great user experience. But it's not easy and not always simple. So the how do we get there? And the process looks something like this, similar to um, Andreas showed something very similar yesterday, which really is dumbed down to an idea. So we'll call it design. But it doesn't necessarily mean it comes from a designer. It just means there's some idea. It's, it's some design. Then there's some validation of that idea or design. And we'll call it the research or feedback. And then there's some implementation. And we'll say that's the build. So these three components work together to hopefully be an iterative process and a cycle, not just let's design something and throw it over the fence and hope it works when we implement it. So starting with some design, maybe it's just jotting down an idea on a piece of paper to kind of help explain your idea or create a, a wireframe, maybe a, a more advanced sketch. Uh, maybe it's then moving on to validating that idea with, if you're working with a UX team, you could work with researchers and run a, a usability test. Or if you're not, that's OK, too. You can still get some form of, of informal feedback on a paper prototype or early, early design, early sketch, or at the point where you're implementing something and going back to validate your assumptions and get some feedback on that implementation. So anywhere in that process is a great time to get feedback. There's no time that's not a good time for feedback. You can always implement it. Hopefully, somewhere in that process of you're, you're past the idea phase and you have something maybe on paper, or you're, you're all the way hopefully before production and, and testing something there. So there's always a good time to, to get feedback. Um, so of course, yeah, when you're, when you're building, one of the main things here, why we show the arrows both ways, is it's not just design and then research, then we're building. We'd, we'd also like to go back and, and test. You might find something different in that case. So maybe when you're testing on a real implementation, you're finding more bugs, um, whereas early on in the process, you're kind of validating the flow and kind of earlier concepts. So hopefully this, this loop continues and it's an iterative process where we, we learn. So that first diagram that Teresa showed where the design was meant to be this nice gate and the experience was really just a, another path that users made, we can learn from that and say, OK, we need to pivot, make a change, then revalidate our, our assumption. Everyone plays a role in improving the user experience. I believe we all want to use user-friendly, intuitive products. And that is why we want to provide you five tools how to make your process easier and include these tools into your process. So we will talk, we'll talk about paper prototypes, community boards, user drawings, card sorts, and design systems. Uh, each of these tools could help to you make products more intuitive. So the first one is wireframing or paper prototyping. Uh, it's a really simple one where you can use just a piece of paper or a whiteboard and draw out your flow. Just ask the questions, where would I click if I'm trying to accomplish this and that? And then show it to someone uh, and get that feedback. Uh, use boxes, squares, arrows, and just draw out and visualize what you think how the screen could look like. Um, because when you put it on actual visual, you can, that's the way how you translate it so people understand what you mean. Uh, this is a wireframe uh, that is hand drawn, but we will show you an easy way how you can just get a quick feedback. So, Colleen, where would you click if you were trying to add a provider? Add provider button. I think it's a button. 
Well done. Uh, so you're adding a provider. You are in a step three right now. You're adding some configuration data. Uh, but I think you forgot something on the step two. How would you get there? I guess I'd click number two and change my information. Oh, so I thought you were going to click the back button. I haven't thought you can click would, on the top. That would work too. That looks good. Okay. Uh, and here you are all, almost at the end, reviewing and submitting your uh, information. Uh, what would you expect to see when you submit? Maybe my results, my new provider, I hope it works. Let's see. So you get a notification, great job, your provider was added, but I think you had a great point that um, the actual provider should be shown on the screen as well. Uh, so this was a short example how you can quickly validate your sketches, wireframes. Uh, it's always gr better to get more people involved, so at least, let's say, not one person, but get more points of view. Uh, but it can be that easy as uh, just asking simple questions about the flow. So the second tool we'll talk about is user concept drawings. And it's kind of similar to, I guess, the first, but the first being you're drawing and wireframing, sketching your own ideas and trying to convey them to somebody else, whereas user concept drawings or, or mind mapping is you're kind of asking users or other folks to describe their ideas to you. So maybe it's just still simple squares, circles, boxes, and lines, arrows. It, it can be really simple, but they're at least explaining some idea to you how different objects relate to each other and you can get a better sense for how they might want to use an interface that, that you're building. And I'll give you an example of how um, we, we did something similar at Red Hat Summit last year because we were working on an application topology view. And we thought, okay, this is, could be a complex view. We better understand how users think about and visualize their application topology because it was a visual interface and an interactive one. So we wanted to be able to ask users at Summit to draw on a whiteboard or an easel their, how they visualize their application topology. And we, we asked follow-up questions about, oh, OK, what action might you want to apply here? What would you need to see in order to, to accomplish your task? So just a couple of examples of what we got from those users. And it was, it was really helpful, and people got pretty into it. So if you can sit back and kind of let folks explain their ideas and give them some time to draw it out, you can really learn, learn a lot on the other side, too. So the next uh, example is card sorting, which is probably more, more familiar and often used for things like navigation, but finding a better navigation on a website or some interface. Uh, maybe it's to help prioritize different items in a list or a group uh, or categorize things. And so let's, it could be done with simple sticky notes like this example. Let's say we work for Netflix and are, are trying to figure out how users want to interact with that interface. Do they care about genres and they want to search by genre? Do they care about going from TVs to movies to documentaries? Or they just want to know, I want to look for something funny. So better understanding how users search for something or how they group items can can help you early on in the process. So this would be kind of a way you get feedback on an early side, or you revalidate maybe an implementation you already created with some navigation. So I'll give you an example of this. We also tried at Red Hat Summit last year to, in this case, not sticky notes. We used blocks because they were more fun. <laughs> but same idea, and same thing with online tools you can use. There's plenty of them to, to do such a thing. but. We got some great feedback, not only how people grouped these different groupings, but they named them too. So in some cases, we got people to further identify what, how they considered these different groupings. And it, it helped us understand, OK, they want to work with these items together, or maybe if they're a developer, they care about a certain group of items, but an administrator prioritizes another group more highly. So it helps us understand their, their personas a bit too. Another tool could be community discussions. Uh, Red Hat Culture is based about community, collaboration, and open source. So there are a lot of chatting tools, 
that we can use to get feedback, such as RC, Slack, blog posts, uh, and or community forums. So this is an example from Foreman uh, community website that Foreman is very active, has a very active community. Uh, so we were trying to figure out what should be the new login page. Uh, so we chatted about and showed the designs how Dash could look like, gave, gave some options, and the community had a chance to vote on the designs and figure out which one is the best. Uh, so using our community is a great way how to get more feedback and become even more active in the community. So definitely take advantage of these active communities. And the last one, uh, number five, is design systems. So taking advantage of design systems that are out there. So whether it's bootstrap, material design, there's, there's plenty that you've probably heard of. And a design system is really just a collection of components. So there's, you can use the design of the components, and you can use the implementation of the components. But there's often explanation of when to use different buttons, items. Um, so there's, there's information out there where you don't need to reinvent the wheel for how to use a drop down or a button. You could focus on the bigger problems like creating a topology view. But the, these design systems all help you create a usable, consistent experience that your user, it's familiar to your users. And we, we have one at Red Hat, so similar idea to the ones I mentioned. Ours is called Patternfly, and many of you have probably used it. I know there's some contributors in the room too. And we help, we use it to help us remain consistent across our products. So we try to contribute to Patternfly from our products, and we also use components from Patternfly, Patternfly into our products um, to, to do the same. So it's a good resource if, if you don't want to create everything from scratch. So I know you all enjoy using intuitive products. So the word intuitive sounds great, so it does sound the word cloud. So we wanted to connect these two buzzwords uh, so you can remember better our tools. So create paper prototypes, learn from user drawings, organize card sorting activities, use community platforms, and design with already existing design systems. If you use any of these, you're making your products more user friendly. Uh, I hope you remember to empathize with users, gather feedback, and also validate assumptions. So even you can start now creating more intuitive experiences. Uh, thank you all for coming, and if you have any questions, we have probably two minutes to answer them. Yeah, definitely at least card sorting. There's a lot of online tools, so you can have, you can create them online and uh, free software tools that you can create and actually just have people kind of, they're, they look like sticky notes, but they, they do the same thing just virtually. So you could do this on the screen sharing, you know, blue jeans, just watching what they're doing, maybe, maybe record the screen if they're okay with it to see the end result. Um, for, yeah, for concept drawings, it's a little trickier because often you kind of get the best concepts from just handwritten. So it's, I think it's hard sometimes that early on in the process. But, yeah, they, these were done in um, the card sorting both, but the user concept drawings were done in person. I, I've done some card sorting online, so it can be done. What, what tool did you use? Um, I can share that later with you. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? I personally had bad experiences allowing the whole communities to vote on design, but that was mostly logos, so I probably you actually mm. did better in that regard. Uh, do you think there is always a good chance to let people vote, or should the final decision be on the UX designers? And 
Yeah, I think I think it's a good question. It's I think it's always helpful to get the feedback. It it may depend on the particular use case. So you know, of course, I guess you're gonna you're gonna have the final say if you're implementing it. But I think maybe it's it's worth providing some context or getting feedback. Maybe just even if it's the whoever's providing feedback, maybe just understanding their role could help because maybe their their answers will differ if they're highly technical, not as technical, or they're an administrator and they have a completely different view versus maybe a developer who is only seeing uh, like one project versus 500 projects. So I don't know. It, it might depend. Gathering some of that information up front could help. But yeah, it can be tricky for sure if the, if the answers are all over the place. You could have people and ask them, would this color work in your context? And then maybe you have someone with color blindness and they say like, yeah, you can't use these colors because then colorblind people like me could read them. Or you have someone who would say, yeah, this color would work badly in my cultural context or something like that, right? So it doesn't have to be that people go down specific designs to say which one are best, but it's a lot about what you're asking for. It's definitely great to get feedback, but you're, if you're asking that question, you're in charge of making the decision then. So feedback is just like collecting different opinions. You try to ask like ease of use ratings or intuitive ratings on things, but I'm sh things like logos are really tough because a lot of that's just opinion, like what looks the best. So we try to stay away from that type of thing and focus on what's specifically usable or like Andre's example, something really specific, if possible. Like which icon is more intuitive to you to demonstrate favorites? You know, something really specific. Thanks. Thank you all.